Hey guys, Jay here from Whiskey Raiders. Thanks for joining me today. We are talking about the best whiskeys that I tasted in August. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Jay, better known as Take, as always, for WhiskeyRaiders.com. It is my job to drink whiskey uh, all month long. I'm a professional spirits critic for WhiskeyRaiders.com, as well as Rum Raiders, Gin Raiders, Tequila Raiders. But today, it is all about the whiskey. Here are the eight whiskeys that I tried that were the best of the month in August out of the 30 or so plus that we reviewed. So the first is, no surprise, it is Master's Keep Voyage. I did a whole video about this whiskey. Uh, this is a really cool bottling. It is a 10-year bourbon that is finished in 14-year rum casks. That means that the, the, the cats held rum for 14 years, they were dumped out, they were um, done by Appleton Estate down in Jamaica, and then those barrels were shipped up to Kentucky where the bourbon was finished for an undisclosed period of time. This is a cool collaboration between the Russells and Joy Spence down at Appleton. Both companies are owned by Campari. I did a full video on it. I'll encourage you to check it out. But this guy was delicious. It was really complex. It was really good at being a bourbon that was finished in rum instead of a bourbon that felt like it had a bunch of rum dumped in, or even worse, a rum with a little bit of a bourbon finish to it. Uh, the price is contentious. It's $275 is the MSRP. I don't particularly care about that because value is in the IVB holder, but it is definitely expensive. So if you guys track this down, if you liked it or not, let me know in the comments. I'm sure the comments will be a war zone anyways because they always are for these types of videos, but I was a big fan of this guy. Not my favorite Master's Keep of all time, but it's up there. If you want a Master's Keep tier list, let me know. I'd be happy to put one together. I own a bottle of every single release. They're all open. We may as well do one if you want to see it. Let me know. Moving on next, we have Barrel Bourbon Batch 35. You can see that I have been enjoying this bottle uh, quite a bit. Here it is in the details. This guy is a combination of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee whiskey. Uh, this has been one of my favorite batches in recent months. I did really like the 33. I love the 27 and the 29, uh, but this guy is hitting hard as well. So this guy is dropping now. It's available across the country starting about now, I wanna say. It's come early to a couple of markets. It's going to come late to a couple of others. Uh, but I know that there there isn't always a ton of fanfare for these batches because Barrel goes, hey, you, you guys know what it's gonna be called, right? Like you don't know what the next Master's Keep will be called, but you do know that after 34 it is probably going to come 35. And after 35, we're probably gonna get a batch 36. Oh, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's cool to have something, uh, not predictable, but you know that there's going to be a new batch. And if you love the current batch, you always hope that like the next batch is just as good. Uh, and if you aren't a big fan of the batch, there's always some solace like, hey man, we know the next batch is coming. This was my favorite. Really hoping the next one does. But that said, this batch performed really strongly for us here at Whiskey Raiders this month. Really good stuff, and these are always a great value. Moving on, we have Old Fitzgerald 10 Year Bottled and Bond. This comes out of their Decanter series. I was able to try a sample of this. I don't have a bottle to show you guys. They just come in these little flasks. We'll throw uh, a couple of graphics up on the screen for you. This guy was shockingly complex. It reminded me of some of the 14s and 15s that I really enjoyed. This guy had a lot of big, bold flavor. I know that this is gonna be a hit because the Decanter series bottlings always are, uh, but hats off to, to Heaven Hill. These releases are always fun. They're tricky uh, to get, so they've become more tricky as people are building their collections. But at 50% ABV, we know it's 10 years old. The price is a little higher than they were before, but still fairly reasonable, I would say. It's a really enjoyable bourbon. It's one that's worth hunting for. Uh, I really like it, it's good stuff. Moving on guys, we are heading over to Beam. Again, this was a flask bottle. I expect, I've been hunting, I've been truly out there hunting, hoping to get one. This is the Hardens Creek Frankfurt edition. This is part of a 17 year trio, uh, distilled by Beam on the same day at the same campus. And then they took barrels from that distillery run, spread them between the Boston campus, the Frankfurt campus, and the Claremont campus. Uh, and they went ahead and bottled them 17 liters, years later to see how they age. It's really cool stuff, it's really old. I don't typically like really old whiskey, but it drinks really well, super easy to drink, full of big fruits, big spice, big oak. They do a good job with it, and it's priced uh, pretty well as well. So this guy was a big runner for us. Uh, it, it always has been. The Claremont was really, really good. I'm looking forward to reviewing the Boston soon. It's good stuff. So if you're hunting for it, let me know. I think it's one of the best values for really old whiskey. And I, I, I'm not convinced it's going to be the oldest that we see from Beam, but it's definitely, it's up there. This is, this is an old release. All right, guys, moving to a producer you may not have heard of. This is 13th Colony. Uh, their double oaked cast strength release. I love this one. It's it's dark as night. It's really cool. I did a I did a first taste tasting. You can check it out. Uh, I did a first taste. My tasting backed it up. It was a big oaky guy. It was full of cola, full of tootsie pop. The value on it not the greatest, but the proof is high. 
The whiskey tastes amazing. The bottle is super funky. It's just a cool release for your shelf. It's not as transparent as I would hope to be, uh, but I do call that out in my video. But all things aside, the quality of the whiskey is there. It is super good, super rich. If you're if you're kind of tired of trying to get the same old same old from the same big heritage guys, it's a really cool release to kind of dig into a new flavor profile from a new, uh, quite frankly, a new player in the game. Moving over to Scotland, we do have Laphroaig and their Karchus. This is the 2023 Karchus release. It's a combination of white port and Madeira. I love it, it's a 52.3 ABV. Uh, so it's really drinkable, but it's still stronger than the majority of the Karchus uh, you're gonna see out there, let alone uh, most Laphroaig in general, except for the cast strength, 25, 30, 32, those really old releases. This guy was full of fruit, full of big like grapiness and lemon bar. Uh, as well as a really nice slap of peat. These continue to be cool, and what I love is that even a couple weeks after I bought my bottle here in Wisconsin, uh, they're still on the shelf. So these used to be kind of a rat race. They used to, like, used to be kind of a bloodbath to get a bottle, uh, but overall, you can find them easier than ever. Moving back, I don't want to say back to America because this is a interesting bottle. It's the Keeper's Heart Irish and American. It's a single barrel picked by Reserve Bar and it was actually our August 2023 Bottle of the Month Club bottle here at Whiskey Raiders. If you're curious about having awesome whiskey show up at your door every month, you can check out whiskeyraiders.com slash bottle of the month uh, to get more information about our Bottle of the Month Club. But this was a blend of Irish whiskey and American whiskey. It was blended, finished in a stout cask and then bottled at cast strength. And if that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. Uh, but on the palate, man, this thing was just, just a bruiser of flavor, full of fun, full of craziness, really good, really easy to enjoy. And it was probably the most unique uh, whiskey that I've really had in a long time. So we uh, will have some clips up from the live tasting. We do an exclusive tasting with all the subscribers of the Bottle of the Month Club. But if you want something new and interesting, that is definitely a bottle to check out. And it's something you can get much easier than that 13th Colony we were talking about a few minutes ago. And to bring this series home, this is the bottle. This was the crown jewel of the month. This was something that was just super incredible. This was the Four Roses 135th Anniversary Small Batch Limited Edition. I was able to get just a taste thanks to Four Roses, and thank you for sending that over. Uh, honestly, it was just a crazy good whiskey. The four components are crazy between 12, 14, 16, 25 years old. There's so much going on. Uh, this this rightfully gained a nine out of 10. It's about as close to perfect as you can get before you get that, that 10 out of 10, kind of that heralded spot. But this is a whiskey that blew my mind. I thought it was gonna be too oaky. It was full of fruit and just beautiful tannin and beautiful dessert notes. And really a hats off to Brent Elliott for that guy. So that crowns up the best whiskey of the month by far. The other seven right behind it with scores of high sevens, eights, nines, approaching 95, 97, 100 points. Just really good whiskey. And yeah, so that was the best whiskey that we drank in August. I love doing this series because it lets me kind of highlight my favorite things. Oftentimes it can be, you know, it's kind of interesting when you have to taste this many whiskeys a month, you forget what the true standouts are until you look back through all of your scores for the month. And it's like, oh man, I love that bottle. And man, this was a killer bottle. And bottles like these just stand out. So if you're looking for an interesting whiskey this fall, go ahead and hunt that voyage. Look for that batch 35. If you love scotch, you gotta check out the carriages. And if you just want something interesting, 13th Colony, uh, Keeper's Heart, they're doing some great stuff. And let me know, first and foremost, if you are trying to get that Four Roses because that bottle was great. So in the description, I will link a video if we've done a video on any of these bottles. I do try and do a dedicated tasting of everything that's reaching really high in our scorecards, or if it's just interesting, a cool first look. But until then, guys, you can go ahead and check out the videos in the description. You can find more from me at whiskeyreaders.com. My name is Jay, better known as Take, and I will see you guys here on the channel for the next Whiskey Raiders video.